Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. We are celebrating Cards by Micah 3000 Subby Video Hop. So it's going to be so much fun. We have tons of crafters on this hop, so check them all out. And congratulations to Micah for this humongous milestone. Yay! Okay, so today we are going to make a card, which is a 5 by 7 card. And I got this watercolor paper from Michael's. I want to say it was like 50% off. So I thought, why not? Let's try it out. And I have my Distress Oxides as well as my uh, replacement mat that I have from the glass mat. And so I am going to put that down onto my glass mat. Now what I'm doing here is I am going to make sort of like an earthy type of mix of colors. So as you can see, I've kind of moved it off to the right hand side so this way I can bring in my wood plank and dry it. Now since doing this video, I have purchased the glass mat from Tonic and so you can actually heat set stuff on your glass mat which I find to be like all-in-one multi-purpose type of thing but on this video I didn't have that so that's why I brought in my wood panel or my wood like cutting board. So I'm going through and you can see I'm just picking up this ink. Now the reason I chose earthy ink colors like browns and greens is because I have a Fiskars stamp that is the United States and so I wanted to make it look like a map of sorts. And so the inspiration behind this card was because it was a going away card for a coworker, and she was basically moving from one state to the next as far as representation. So she'll be working for a different office from a different state, and so you'll see it all come together. Now here you can see that the footage fairies got a hold of me, and I don't show you me stamping out this stamp, <laughs> but I will have that linked below if I can find it. It's an old stamp. Basically, it comes with this stamp of the United States and a bunch of little other things like um, little road trip signs and look, you have your little GPS signal. And so I'm putting, she's moving from Washington State to Colorado to work in the Colorado office. And so that's why I put where her heart will always be in Washington and then where she's going, which is Colorado. And so th that's why I chose those two symbols there. Now over the Michigan Lake, I am, oh, I said that wrong, didn't I? It's Lake Michigan. <laughs> Lake Michigan. I am just putting some blue Arteza markers just to make it stand out that it's water. And the rest of it, I can't tell you if this is accurate or to scale. I don't know what's more green and what's more brown as far as the U.S. goes, but it worked for me. So I was just went with it. I pulled out my water color paper, uh, some more watercolor paper here, and then I'm going to use my makeup brushes with some of these um, colors right here. So I am going to be using, I believe this is um, Broken China and Mermaid Lagoon and Blueprint Sketch, I want to say. But pick any blues you want because they'll work. Now, I know, I am fully aware that there is a piece of land connected, Mexico, to the south of us, and I get that. For the purposes of this card, I put blue all around it as if it was sitting on the ocean and I know geographically it is inaccurate because I don't have any land to the north hello Canada and I don't have any land to the south but we're just gonna go with it because if you follow me you know that I just you got to go with in your heart desire and this was in my heart's desire so I'm just putting down a whole bunch of different colors here of the blue and then I'm gonna spritz it with some water to get that distressed look because one of the greatest features of Distress Oxide is the way that that comes out. When you um, dab it, you can pick it up with water or you can just kind of do what I did and just let it seep into each other. And it's going to give a more blended, smooth look. So um, I was kind of going for both here, kind of like the watercolory look with some splatters and then also kind of a blended. So that's what we ended up with. I was very happy with the ending of this. I thought it was super pretty the way those colors mixed together. Okay, so now I have my piece done and I am going to start kind of figuring out how I want to lay out my card. Um, I have to stamp out my amazing superhero woman here first. Uh, this woman that I'm making this card for is one of the most motivated and 
just inspirational women I've met. She is a hard charging go getter, just amazing hard worker. And so I thought this was super fitting for her. Now, because I have all my stuff out, I'm going to stamp her out twice and I'm going to keep one for future reference. So I'm going to go through now the person this card was for. I like to try to emulate the card to match what the person looks like. So she has fair skin and red hair. And so that's how we're going to color up our image. I am going to keep it red, white, and blue, or blue and red, really, for the outfit. Blue, red, and gold. And we'll get to that in a minute. But um, right now you can just kind of see I'm going through with my skin tone colors. I am using Arteza Real Brush pens on Bristol Smooth cardstock. I, depending on the watercolor cardstock, I can get the Artezas to move fairly decently. But on Bristol, I never have a question about it. I never have an issue with them. They just move beautifully and perfectly. Um, I will tell you probably the one thing I have a hard time with with Arteza is if it's a big image that you have to color in, that could be a challenge, like this cape right behind her, the cape. That could be a challenge because you have to try to keep your coloring even and so that you don't get that really watercolory look. When the images are smaller, it's a lot easier to work within the confines of that space. But as you can see here with this big space of the cape, it gets a little bit more challenging. Now I can go through there with the entirety of the red and just fill it in. And that would be probably completely acceptable and it would probably look really good, but it'd be very dark. And so I'm trying to go for sort of a blended look. Now I say it's a challenge. It doesn't mean that it can't be overcome, right? You, but you can kind of see how that water might look a little too, a little too wet. So couple recommendations for that. You could ensure that your water brush, if you're using one, does not have a lot of water on it, or you can use a regular paintbrush and dip it into the water. And this way, you have a little bit more control about how much is gonna come out. But if you see on my boots, I have zero issue because I go in there, I blend it out, and I'm done. But you can kind of see the difference between the two, right? Is It's a little bit more of a space. So I'm gonna go back to the cape, I believe, and I'm going to try to add a little bit more, I think. We'll, we'll see. I recorded this video like a month ago. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't stay on top of your things. So I am. I'm going to go back. See, I can predict my own behavior. So I'm going to go back and try to add a second layer. Artezas are great for that, for when you let it dry and then you go back to it. If you go back to it while it's still wet, it's not really going to do anything. You got to let it dry. And I think that's with any watercolors. You want to build up that color. And so that's exactly what I did there. I went back and I just touched up that red and it came out exactly how I wanted it. So we're good to go there. Okay, so I get my cape all colored up into the red. I'm going to add little tiny accent pieces here. I just think this Stampin' Bella stamp set is amazing. I think she is just fierce and she is confident and just, just great. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to go in with a blue right here and just add that to her um, bottoms. And I will tell you, now I'm going to go at the red. So the red, I'm going to use the wine red first just for a little bit of lining. And then I'm going to go in with this bright red. And I feel like the wine red is going to really kind of deepen that color right where I want it. I don't want it to be too cherry red to match. So I think I chose um, a different, more like an orangey red to go over the hair. And this way it kind of, you can see the difference between the cape and the hair, just a tiny bit difference. But once this is all said and done, it didn't really matter. I think it, you really weren't distracted by the colors being similar. I am going to go over where I want things gold, but I go back and I fix that in the end because I found a much better um, technique for the gold that I was much happier with. I'm going to put some red lipstick on her because I thought that was just cool to do. And you can also add a little bit of a cherry or like a blush color to her cheeks if you want. Now on the side of this card, I'm going to take out this Paper Smooches stamp set. And this is going to have sentiments that are just really encouraging. Like, you're awesome, you're kick ASS, and just in case your kids are around listening. Um, 
you know, and then there's another one that says you totally rock. So I think those are so much fun to put on the card. Of course, you want to be wary of your recipient. Um, if that is, that language is offensive to them, obviously you're not going to want to make this card for them. But I can guarantee it was not <laughs> offensive for this recipient. She loved it. So that was really nice to see. Now on the inside, I did my own pseudo sentiment. I said, we miss you already because she had left, and then the, um, like, you have no idea, <laughs> which is just, if you knew her, you would know it fits her, and so I am going to pop this up on the card base uh, with some fun foam, so I'm putting some really strong score adhesive, this is scrapbook.com monster roll, it's, I can't even call it a mama roll, this is a monster roll, and I'm going to cover both sides because I find that to be the easiest way to kind of get this whole thing covered up. Now I'm going to peel off one of the release sides and put this right on the back. You want to cut down your fun foam right to the size that you want, a little bit smaller than your panel because you don't want it to overlap. And then I'm going to place that on my card base. Again, this is a five by seven card. Lastly, I'm going to put my elements together. And so I am folding that up, scoring it, and we are going to place the United States down first. And then we're going to put our superhero gal right over that. So I wanted to try to encapture all of the things about our friend um, as she left. She is an inspiration to us, a superhero in her own right. She's leaving from one state to the next, and she kicks butt. And so I tried to incorporate all that. I also took out some star stamps that I had in my stash and just put them all over the background just to kind of break it up a little bit and add a little bit of that. And so there we have it. Now, the last thing that I did, which I feel totally made the card pop, was I took some gold stickles, and you'll see this in the still photos, but I took some gold stickles, and I placed that on every part of her outfit that was gold. And I felt like that really, truly made that card just pop and come to life, and here you can see them. And so that was finishing up our card. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for joining us on this hop. There is a giveaway for this hop. So I will be giving away a stamp set. If you comment below, we will leave it open for two weeks and then I'll choose a winner. And um, just make sure you get back to me within 72 hours to claim your prize. Uh, comment below on anything you want to. Who's your superhero in life? Let's do that. Who's your superhero? And I will uh, pick a winner. Thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations to Micah again for hitting 3,000 subscribers. What a great accomplishment. And we'll see you along the hop. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.